welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at another phase in our build of the um, uh, dust collector. So, one of the things that, remember in the onset video that I talked about, is how do we connect a hose? So, we have a bunch of this, um, in short, roughly inch and a quarter, inch and a half hose that we want to connect up to this, but... Um, Again, you kind of see how that goes and, and how do you seal it. So I want to keep this kind of universal, as I mentioned. So one of the pieces that, that I've done is I've decided um, to use these inch and a half couplers. So one of the things, the, the system in my shop, I'm using um, high velocity vacuum. And I'm using um, inch, and a, in, inch and a half pipe, PVC pipe, run to the different stations. And it seems to work pretty good. I know most typically it's probably a, a four inch, but I just don't have the room. So this has worked well. So I've coupled actually uh, the one and a half inch with this. And one of the things is it fits roughly inside of here, this this pipe. And what I've been able to do is, is epoxy the, these tubes uh, by filling this with epoxy liberally and then inserting the tube and letting, letting it cure. I get a solid connection in there and then what I can do is connect this with another, mate this with another piece of uh, inch and a half pipe and um, it creates a coupler. And then when I want to disconnect it, you know, I envision this sort of as the pipe, I connect it and then I just disconnect it and it has a pressure fit. So what I decided to do in this case is to use the inch and a half. So what I did is an open SCAD came up with some parametric adapters and one of the things is I designed the adapters to mate directly with this and then to mate directly with these pieces here so um, I think it probably goes the other way around this one goes here now if you might remember this one might get a little snug so you might remember that uh, these are slightly different sized openings so I made it to the smaller opening and then what I did is I used a heat gun to um, form fit it to this one. I'm not going to press these all the way on because I'm going to show you another step in this process. But this is kind of the idea. And then what will happen is this will this will get one of its own and then I'll use a small piece of inch and a half pipe to couple it. Actually what I'm going to do is is use a 90 degree angle here because it comes down from the ceiling. So this would be a 90 degree angle there to, to mate the two. And so part of that 90 degree will go in here, and then the other part will go in there. And again, I'll show it all w w when it's completed. However, in this case, what I wanted to do was, uh, again, one of the pieces. This is a pretty fairly snug fit, um, but not perfect. So I want to glue this on. I am not going to glue this to this. This, this ha These have enough pressure fit where these seal up just fine. And I want to have it versatile, sort of like the way I did the flange piece, where if I want to change it in the future, I can I can change it up in the future without having really destroyed the, uh, the cyclone. Yeah, because who knows, I might come up with a better idea in the future. So anyways, what we have, what we're going to do is um, kind of pretty simple. I just have the black material here so I don't get glue on the, the cutting mat. And so I've got some instant setting epoxy because uh, I tend to tend to seek instant gratification in things as most people do and so uh, actually I got this stuff I think at Harbor Freight or something really cheap so you don't need a ton of it and so I just use these um, these pie pans now the one thing is you want to get uh, a fair you know make sure you balance to make sure both uh, resin and uh, um, oh, what the heck do they call the other side curing compound or whatever? So, uh, yeah, one of the things I forgot to do is draw this back in, so that makes it easier to put the cap on usually because it always gets a little bit messy. There we go, we got the cap back on, and then I just use uh, basically I get these, these tongue depressor things to mix it up. So I'm just going to mix this up like this until it gets, you know, to a nice cloudy white. And again, you don't need a ton of this material. Um, and then, then what I'm going to do is just take this material, with the, and, and the biggest thing I want to do is make sure, for a couple different reasons, 
I get it all the way around the base and uh, again it doesn't take a huge amount because again you just want to make it because it does make already makes tight surface contact the other thing I want to do is is for rigidity purposes make sure I get good contact I might have to do a little bit more for the second one but I think you'll get the idea is 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 also get around the face here because I'm I want structurally um, for aesthetics I don't want to do the outside if you really wanted to get uh, uh, picky about it you could do the outside of this piece I'm not going to do that I think I'll get enough rigidity so now what I've done is I've covered out this this area as well as the face area and then I'm just simply going to press and turn fit this and I'm going to turn this a couple times just so I get a good good adhesion um, between the two so what will happen is I'll also get so I also get the connectivity of this PVC piece to this PLA piece in the surface area so that'll make that stronger and again I think I'm gonna have to mix up just a tad bit more I'm pretty close um, so kind of the working time of this keeps keep this video short. And again, one of the tricks that I've learned is you kind of, if you, you know, maybe most people know it, I just kind of suck this back, and then it makes it easier to put these tops back on. Still get a little bit on your fingers. And I should have brought a paper towel here next to the bench, but I didn't turn this side of the room. But anyways, kind of get the idea. So I'm, again, we're going to just re remix this up. It's starting to get goopy and set up here and again we're just going to take this all the way around and so again we designed these up in OpenSCAD so uh, they're parametric so anytime I need an adapter or something I can just change the settings and uh, come up with a new adapter so and, and again um, you know I've got liberal to mount here and then also you know to slide into this piece and again we'll slide this in and we'll turn this like this so it sets up and then what I'm going to do is just rest it on the ABS here and let this cure for 10 or 15 minutes it's a quick setting epoxy and then I can just simply mount these on here and we should be good to go so uh, this is the next stage of the the build and again um, one of the reasons for doing the front piece here just a little quick discussion is is again this is probably one of the weaker pieces I did this out of PLA with 50% infill and um, I think 1.3 millimeter um, uh, uh, shells and it's uh, I believe five millimeters thick so so most of this is, is shell so there's very little infill and what infill there is is at 50 percent so this is pretty rigid however this face structure um, is uh, uh, pretty uh, you know still probably one of the weak points and one of the things I did is I printed it uh, upside down so in other words this big part was on the upside um, and I kind of show a video uh, of, of it printing, uh, probably have putting it at the, at the beginning, um, just so you can see, and then, you know, some of the OpenSCAD files, so you can kind of see how it comes together in window and window as I've been doing this video. But anyways, uh, the reason for that is I wanted a very clean surface on the outside here, which is exposed, and so I didn't care about the inside surface, which I could just sand easily and stick inside the, the PVC. But I got to admit, I, I, I sliced it with the newest ver version of Cura and used supports, and came out beautiful. So even even with that, so um, just some kind of tips and tricks. And, and again, one of the reasons I'm kind of sharing this is kind of give you guys ideas if you're looking for a cheap coupler system this really is it because I mean these were pennies on the dollar at uh, you know big box store printed these out and you simply use two of them with a piece of uh, inch and a half pipe because one of the things I want to be able to do is change up the ports on this to, to different things so uh, if I want to because I'm going to have hand tools too which are going to have this hose connected to it and uh, 
you know, I want to be able to separate it from the main dust extraction system, but still run it through the cyclone to catch the dust. So all I have to do is now uncouple this. It's just simple twist, plug in my tool, and it works. And again, it's a cheap system using this PVC. So hopefully you found this interesting and, and enlightening, and I'll do one more video of this all put together. Uh, so, hey, found it interesting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, more of this coming. See you in the next one. Please Cheers. click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.